Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. Before we start today, I'd like to take a second to give a special thank you to our sponsor for today's video, that is Squarespace. More on that later in the video. So today's video, it's a little bit weird. It's kind of like, I'm looking at the plants that I have for you, it's sort of like a plant update. But I also want to do a video of basically plants that I still love after all this time. Now, I would have included so many more plants that are in this video, but a lot of the plants that I would include are either way too big to hold up in this video, or I just don't have great examples of them now in the shop. So without further ado, we're going to talk about seven plants that I still love, even after all this time, and at the same time, I guess, give you a little bit of an update on some of them, because I have a plant here that you're really going to want to see. Right, I think I'm going to start with something that is easy to hold up, and this one is going to surprise you. I won't lie. Give me one second. All right, so hopefully you can see this plant well. My unit is creaking. Apologies if you can hear that. But this plant here is a plant. It is taken from the plant that I've owned for the last, I don't know, five years, right? The mother plant, you can't see it, but I can. It's kind of grown up the wall and it's sort of stuck to it in Chaos Corner. If you've seen enough of my videos, you may know Chaos Corner in the shop. So this here, believe it or not, it's not looking the healthiest it's ever looked because it's been blasted under a light. It's been neglected a little bit, but this here is Monstera Penati Partita. This is juvenile. As you can probably tell, this is not what the plant looks like when it's older. What it looks like when it's older, it's amazing. Basically, the clue is in the name. It's very pinnate. So what you don't get are holes. Even though this looks like holes on this leaf here, it's the only one I've got to show you, it's not. These will end up being full-blown fenestrations, and that's all you will get. You won't really get holes on the plant. This is literally just because it's not quite mature yet. So it's a shame, really, because I cut the plant. I got this. I've had nothing but juvenile leaves. But to be fair, I've neglected it, and I haven't fed it. I haven't done anything. It's been it's been a bit of a rough ride for this one. Now I cut it because of the situation on this wall to this hand side of the shop. Basically it's grown up from one of the pots in the bottom. It's grown behind a shelf so it's got about like that much space where the wall is and it started to connect up to the wall. So I saw I think this and then maybe was it just the top I've cut? I can't remember now because I think there might have been some dead leaves further down. But I basically just cut it off and decided to grow a little piece for myself because I loved it that much. And honestly, I've always loved this plant. I think it just got a bit unruly. It came to the shop. A lot's happened since, obviously. I moved to my Manchester flat. I had no space for it. And it just sort of lived here. And obviously it's become literally part of the shop. So I would love to grow one of these out again. I might cut this again yet. I don't know. I don't know if people care for these or people would want any of these because I definitely have enough to go around. It's huge, it's up the wall. But I would love, love, love to have one of these in my house as long as my house will allow for that kind of space. It might not. I am thinking about it. We will see. I would like to grow this plant a little bit more to maturity here. Maybe pot this up and put it up in the studio. Something like that. I'd have to change out the substrate as well because the substrate is lecker. This is a new leaf, so it's justified in being a lighter green. This is not. This is a little bit of a hungry leaf. The other leaves are absolutely fine, though. It is just a case of that one being hungry. So... That is Monstera Panatipartita. I love it, love it, love it, even after all this time. And also, here is my bonus update on my little cutting. It's definitely grown well, you know. He don't look like much, but I promise these are amazing. Get yourself on Instagram and have a look because you may be converted. This is a really nice Monstera for people that want something new that isn't often seen. Another plant that I still love after all these years literally has to be this plant. This isn't my plant, but it's one from the shop. My plant is huge and it's kind of rooted in upstairs a little bit. It's a bit crazy. But this here is Anthurium crystallinum. And honestly, guys, I just, I don't know why I love this plant so much. It's like a step up from Anthurium clarinervium, which is a really popular veiny velvet anthurium that you can get. You can get them in garden centers, stuff like that. Not everywhere in the world, but most places in the world. But this guy is, he's basically a step up. So he's a little bit harder to look after, but he's not insane. These are really common now, by the way, and I, I would almost use the word common, maybe uncommon, because they're not necessarily in garden centers, but if you want to buy one of these online, seriously, you, you're just not going to struggle at all. So for that reason, they are still one of my favorites. I'm obsessed with them. Look how much it's sized up, by the way. That was the old leaf, and it's just gone bam. Oh, and this is like really soft. Can you see how soft that is? It's not finished growing yet, so I've been really careful in picking this out from the shelf. I'll show it to you a little bit closer so you can see my face in with it. There you go. Even that now is the size of my head. Because this is a baby plant. I wouldn't class this as a large plant either. 
If you haven't tried one of these, honestly, guys, if you're wanting to try some bougie Anthurium, but you really don't want to spend the money, this is honestly your boy. If you like the velvet types anyway, as I say, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's totally manageable. And if you kill one of these, honestly, they're at that price where it doesn't really matter. And I know it all matters because plants cost money and money is very scarce right now for a lot of us. But you get what I'm trying to say. In the scheme of spending a lot of money on plants and investing in plants, you can't go far wrong with one of these. You will get them for a really affordable price. This one's doing all right. It's probably been cut 50 million times and it's growing back just fine. They don't really have any problems in my shop. They just grow. They don't really get many problems with things like bacterial rust. It's not an anthurium that gets attacked the most in this shop, for example. So I really, really rate them. And when these get big, by the way, oh, oh my God, they just get better and better and better and better and better. They just, oh, I have some leaves upstairs that are probably the size of my torso. They are huge. And that crystallinum I've had since, since 2019, when I first got crystallinum in the shop, I've had it that long. So I'm obsessed with it. So unfortunately, I haven't given you an update on that. You may have seen it in my studio plant tour that I did a couple of months ago. So it is in there if you want to see it. I will link that down below for you. But yeah, this pretty guy is still set to size up and he's beautiful. Anthurium crystallinum, please do try them if you want to, because I think you'll fall in love with them. Okay, so the next plant I want to show you, it's variegated, but I'm not talking about the variegated form. I'm talking about the green form, but I think my green forms are, I think they're at the back of the shop on the top shelf, literally, and I'm not gonna be able to get to them. So the only one that's actually within reaching height is this one. And funny enough, you guys actually asked me for an update on this one. I think it was maybe before the last repot with me or Nat. It was some, some time recently anyway, I've been asked for an update on it. So here we are. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's so quick and easy to edit any one of these templates and make it your own. You can even have multiple websites under one account. For example, here is the website for my shop, but I also have a new one here that I created from a template. This way I can switch between whatever I'm working on really easily and I I can create and manage new websites so much more efficiently. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover, Kaylee. Back to the video. This here is very small looking, but I promise it's an anthurium. This is anthurium vitari folium, but it is variegated. And I will show you it up close in a second, but I need you to know I'm not actually talking about variegated vitari folium. I'm literally just talking about standard green because they're absolutely amazing. Really, really amazing. Now this one doesn't feel amazingly leathery because it's young. It just needs a little bit more time. But if I show you how amazing it looks, right here. Hopefully you can see it well on the camera. It's quite dark in here today. Can you see how incredible that looks? And it is kind of all over the plant. If I just hide my face, you should be able to see how it's kind of looking. It's looking really, really nice. This one hasn't grown too quickly. I think I should probably put it in some of my feed. Also, it's in pond and mm, most of my anthuriums, I'm going to be honest, they do way better in lecker than they do in pond. Most of them, not all, but most of them. They do better in pond if they're upstairs, but if they're down here where the humidity is and everything else, they tend to do better in pond. So I will probably move him, but that's him. Now, Anthurium vitari folium are literally, oh, they're just, they're incredible guys, they really are. They can go to a ridiculous, and I mean ridiculous extent of underwatering, similar to a Anthurium clarinervium. The roots on this are just built different. Honestly, I know all Anthurium roots, or at least most of them, are built very, very thick. This is just one of the plants that just takes it a little bit further, as well as Clarinervium, I would say. So this, I would argue, is as easy as Anthurium Clarinervium. It's just a hanging version. So what you can't see here is these will grow really, really long and hang down like huge belts. And it's the best way I can describe it. Huge, big, long belts. And I always like this plant. I always have. Because a lot of people like their hanging plants. I know I do. But it's a really nice alternative alternative to the normal stuff you see. So things like philodendron micans. That's my wall. 
We're going to try and talk through it. Yeah, so it's it's different to what you normally see, like philodendron micans, any of the epipremnum family that trail. Like, there's, there's so many different plants. I've got here a philodendron that trails. I've got here a epipremnum that trails as well. That's actually wilting quite a bit. Things like that. It's just a really, really nice alternative. And I do appreciate that I can't really showcase that with this plant, but I'm sure I've got a picture somewhere that I can insert for you which really shows what I'm talking about. I'm sure I've got some lovely shop pictures somewhere. I've always liked this plant. I probably always will like this plant. I would like to think it would go in my house. I don't know if I will put this one in my house, by the way. I might do just a green one and let the shop have this one. I don't really know. I mean, this one would be nice. Maybe I could put it in the house. I'll have a think on that because I don't know. Because I need a way to hang it or sit it on a bookshelf or something like that. And I don't have a bookshelf yet. I really need to get one. Anthurium vitarifolium. This does not quite do it justice because it's so small, but you've got to trust me when I say they're just incredible and they're so easy to care for. They do get spider mites, they can, which is a little bit surprising given the plant is so leathery and tough. It's nothing you can't manage though because these leaves here are very easy to clean and get a, you know, a cloth with dish soap or, or neem or whatever you want to do down them. So I wouldn't let that put you off. And to be honest, when I had spider mites on mine, it was kind of well-deserved. I neglected the plant for many months, so... Yeah, Anthurium vitarifolium. Always have loved it. Probably always will love it. Listen, listen, I can't do one of these videos, guys, without mentioning this plant. I can't do it. You know I can't. You know I can't. This is one of my favorite philodendron of all time, and it probably always will be. I can't see this changing because it's so easy to grow and it looks so good. Now, this here is philodendron gloriosum, but I'm pretty sure by looking at these, and I think Everyone at home will agree. This is probably round form, just because these leaves don't look particularly pointy. They do look more on the round side, but tomato, tomato, you can get tons of different types. I've been meaning to do a video on the different types for a long, 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 long time. So I should probably do that at some point in the next couple of months. Honestly, guys, just give me a little bit of time to settle down. I can't not do this video without mentioning this plant. If you want a really pretty crawler that is a philodendron, get one. I think they're a reasonable price these days. You do find them in garden centers. It just kind of depends on the form that you're after. I do think you get good forms in the garden centers. I don't think there's too much regular form going around. They're quite muted. Obviously, you've got white vein that does resemble this a little bit more, but it's pointier. You have dark form that's really hard to get. I think I only have one of them. And you have this round form here. You have different shaped petioles. You have ones that come in a little bit pink when they're developing. I think I've got them all pretty much. That's why I need to do video on them. But I'm such a fan of this plant. I will bring this up to the camera. This is, you may recognize this. This is one of the plants that sits in front of the wall. So I will move back with it so you can really see what's happened to him. He's doing fine. He's got a bit of a lean on because he's sort of growing like out and up a bit like a, what does that? Some kind of dinosaur, I don't know. But he's doing all right, actually. He's sized up really, really quite nicely. The newest one is this one that I'm touching with my chin. Yeah, he's looking good. That's the back of him. If anyone wants to know, I'll come up a little bit closer with him. Nothing too special on the back. But as I say, if I just fill the frame, look at that. Honestly, if you've never had a Gloriosum before, I, I don't understand what's stopping you. Like, from me to you, I'm okay. Because I don't understand why someone wouldn't like this. The only downside I can see to these plants is the crawling aspect. And that is because not everyone wants a plant that grows like this. So, i.e. a longer surface rather than upper surface. But I've got this thing at the minute, and I have mentioned it to a few of you, and a few of you agree. I'm a little bit against pulls at the minute. Kind of want to avoid them a little bit. So crawlers are kind of in for me. But yeah, that's him. He's just, oh, he's just amazing, isn't he? Look at him. He is just, oh my God. So that is Philodendron Gloriosum. I believe this to be round form. He's awesome. If you like them, feel free to have a look at different types on the internet. Just type in Gloriosum round form, dark form, regular form, white vein. That should get you most of them, I think. But again, there's variations on them, but that's kind of it. Is that a little bug? No, it's not. It's soil. Great. Fell down gloriosum. How can you not like this? How can you not like this? This is beautiful. Oof. I love it so much. Are you ready for cuteness? You ready for cuteness? Let me grab this next one. Again, one of my favorite plants is still this guy. I'm trying to think of the best way to show him. He's changed a little bit because I've let him sit here for about half an hour under the lights and he's been sat in a certain position. So he's now pointing down over, whereas upstairs he looked really vibrant and good. This guys, as you may know, this is Gus. This is the original Gus. Who is Gus? Let me tell you. So this here is a Maranta, I think it's called like Maranta Lecunera. I can never say the name. And it's the version with the pink stripes down it. Now, 
Don't get me wrong, this has been light blasted a little bit and it's grown back from the brink of death. So it's not looking spot on. It, it could be a lot better. It needs a better feed. Um, but if I just show you this here, can you see? Yeah, this leaf here that I'm waggling is basically indicative of what it should look like. So everyone knows Gus has had a rough time. So just kind of live with him like this, but he is thriving. I probably will trim him again and root bits of him and, and stick them back in just to give him a nice haircut and get some nice colored leaves back because he's getting bleached in the studio. But anyway, this plant is one of the first house plants I had when I moved to Manchester for my job, way before the plant channel or anything. He's one of the first plants I had. And I actually bought him because I found out he could move by himself. And I thought that was the best thing ever. So if you don't know what these are, they're part of the prayer plant family. Basically, during the day, these leaves will come down like this. They're not wilting at all. This is genuinely how they work. The leaves come down and then at night they will actually fold up, not necessarily vertically, but they will all fold up like this and close up a bit like a flower, a little bit like prayer. That's why we call them prayer plants. This is part of the Maranta family. And honestly, I will never stop loving this plant. This plant means so much to me. I love him so much. I named him because he was a bit silly and he got a bit stressed and he got a bit flappy. I named him Gus after the, I think it's one of the mice in Cinderella. So I named him that and it stuck. And most people on the channel, I think, like him. Am I right, guys? Even if you don't like Maranta, just because he's so sentimental to me. And I've had a lot of plants over the years. I've had so many plants over the years, obviously. Some I've put back in the shop because I just sort of had my fill of them. Some I have died and I've got a new one from the shop. Some I've just kept anyway. Some I've had to sell, you know, all these different things. Sometimes I didn't have the environment for them, so I had to give them away. Things like that. Sometimes they got too big for the house. But this guy has stayed through it all through it all and he's not dead yet and he's had some bad times so he is the reason that I will always love Maranta and those of you that love Maranta I do have two other types sorry three other types I have the lemon lime which I really love I have the no ID one from Indonesia it looks a bit like a Maranta silver band but it isn't and then I have Maranta silver band as well so I have a little collection of Maranta and they ain't going anywhere I think I'm definitely going to take one home and put it in my bathroom because I love him so much. I have to. So yeah, that's him. I'm going to put him down because he's a little bit heavy, but that's him. I might have to do a little thumbnail because this is just so cute. Look at it. Look at him. My hair's, uh, it's, it's not great, guys. It's not great. It has been tied up and I've just sort of let it down for the video. It's supposed to be going to the gym, so I'm actually in gym gear, but just have to excuse the way I look. Okay, the next plant is going to be a little bit difficult to hold up, but I'm going to do my best. So let me just get him. You do know him. Trust me, you do know him. He doesn't have a name, but he's gone from strength to strength. He's nearly died several times. He's an absolute icon. Uh, a lot of people have mixed feelings on this plant, but for me, he's always very special because he came to me at a time where <laughs> the chances of him coming to me were astronomically unlikely. Like, it's just not a plant people had. There were a couple around, but there weren't many. And he will always be special to me for that reason, no matter what. Even though the plant is more available now, he is still so special to me. And he's just popped a new leaf and it looks wicked. It looks really wicked. So I'm going to show you him now. Let me pick him up. Guys, look. Look how big he's getting. Look at this leaf. <laughs> so this here is Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. This is the original one that I got in like 2019 and... Literally, I think a group of people tried to cancel me. They tried to gaslight me into saying that Enid had gone behind my back and said that it wasn't a real plan or something, even though she helped me with the purchase. It was a literal nightmare. It was like my first taste of bad juju on the internet. But I love this plant because it's reminded me what happens when you come through the other side of it. I know that sounds stupidly sentimental, but it does. And I'm not a sentimental person, guys. I don't know if you can tell. I have a really big heart, but it's tucked away quite a lot in a lot of layers. So it takes a lot for me to feel sentimental about something, but this guy is it. Ben mentioned cutting from this about an hour ago, and I nearly tore his head off about it because I don't want to. However, what I will say is this is this is a very lucky boy because I have showed you this before, but hopefully I can show you even better here. Hopefully you can see that. It might be focusing on me, so I apologize. I'm going to try and put it in line with my face. It actually has three growth points. So one growth point is where my finger is here. One growth point is here. And then you have the big beastie growth point where my other finger is waggling here. He's just immense, guys. He's absolutely immense. Look at him go. The size of this. I would love to be able to kind of hold it up and show you. Here we are. There you go. There you go. 
Literally, that's how big he's getting. Now, it's not really about his length. It's more about the development of the lobes here because they're starting to get really deep. You can see some of the old leaves on the plants are not quite as earlobey as him. Sorry, I, I'm not quite tall enough for this frame. So, which one was the one before him? Was it this one? Uh, no, nearly. There was this one. There was then this one at the front that's definitely sized up. And now there's him. Can you literally, can you deal with how good he is? Because I can't. But yes, this is a plant that is now, it's still, I would still class it as rare. You know, it's not kicking about everywhere. And I'm talking about commercially, obviously, because in the wild, it's still really rare, which is weird. Surely there should be efforts somewhere to put some of the tissue culture plants back into the wild. I would love to see that. I don't know if that's something that people are doing. Let me know if it is. But I'd love to see that happen. Despite the fact you can get these most, not most places, you know what I mean? If you're looking for one online, you're probably gonna find one if you've got the money. But it's just really nice that I've got this one. I've had it all this time. And honestly, he should be bigger than this. If anybody's about to critique the size of the plant and everything else, concerned, I've had it since 2019 and it was maybe, oh, uh, well, literally about that big, even smaller than that, really. If you want to critique me for that, that's absolutely fine. This plant's gone through quite a journey. It's been cut from, oh, it, just horrific, honestly. I'm really, really happy to have it. So I don't really want to cut from it because bad juju tends to happen when you do. But that's a little update on him. And honestly, I will love him till the end of time. He's gorgeous. I do need to do a repot with me, with him. So at some point you might see me repot him. It will be scary because I don't like to disturb this guy. But I think enough is enough. And I think I'm going to have to do something soon because he's going to start hanging. And I would like him to at least grow up like a baby pole. So let me know how you would plant this. I'll show him to you one more time before we move on. There you go. See what I mean? It's just a bit, mm. But this leaf though, hell yeah, look at that. Hell yeah, that looks amazing. I'll pop him down. Ugh, don't wanna break him. Right, this plant is just gonna be a nightmare to lift up, but I think I'm just gonna have to lift it up, guys. There's no other real way. But this is a plant that I probably always will love, but it is newer. It's not like a lot of these other plants. So I think every plant bar this plant is something that I've had for a long time or whatever have you that I'm still in love with. And as I say, there's so many more than this on this video. So I might do a part two. If you want a part two, let me know and I'll try and dig some of these things out or I'll have to run and gun with a camera and show you them and walk up to them. That's why half of them aren't in here. But this plant here that I'm about to show you is it's definitely a newer edition, but it is something I really love. And it just, it looks stunning, on honestly. There's better specimens out there than this one but it doesn't change how much I love it so I'm gonna try and pick it up I'm gonna move my hair around and try and not tap my mic and I've got plant crumbs all over my top so let me just pick this up now Ooh, okay this can you see this oh you can but I'm gonna have to tip him oh he's full he's full this here is philodendron whippleway and he's amazing can you see this Right, there you go. There's the colors on him. I'm quite far away from the camera. And to be fair, this has been sat directly under a grow light. So it's growing like up. Do you know what I mean? It's not facing forward, but literally, if you don't know how whippleways work, they come out this pink color that hopefully I can show you there. And they then sort of fade down to, eventually they fade down to a green, but it's never full green in my experience. Believe it or not, that's not full green there. A lot of the time they stay more on the minty tone maybe more like these here. Sorry, I can't get any closer to this camera. They kind of stay a little bit more like this, so they don't live like this. But what I will say is, and you can probably see this on this plant, and this is another reason why I want to pick up a big one instead of a lot of the smaller ones I've got, is because you can see the journey of the leaf color and not everyone, I think, knows how long the color stays around. And it's one of the reasons I love them over any other color changing plant. Now, needless to say, guys, one thing I'll just tackle right now off the bat, Philodendron Florida Ghost would have been in this video. If anyone's going to comment going, oh my God, why isn't it in there? It would be. They're all up top and I can't grab them. <laughs> so yeah, if you want a part two, let me know. But this is another plant that I feel demonstrates color changing philodendrons really well. But this is the plant that quite honestly, out of all of them, out of everything that changes color that I've ever, ever owned, this is top. This is absolutely top. And you can see from this plant because these leaves down at the bottom, they're really, really old. They're really, really old and they're still minty and they're still pink on the bottom. Look at that. Can you see this? This is one of the bottom leaves and this came out a long time ago. And I have updated you on this plant before in videos. So you can probably tell how tall it's grown if I just hold it next to me. It's nearly at the top of this pole already. Now it hasn't sized up, but that's probably more my fault. I really haven't fed it. It's had nothing but water. It's got pond in the pot, but I don't have the highest opinion of pond when it comes to feed. So yeah, that's him. But 
I just wanted to show you the journey that these leaves go through. And it's not like they fade down really, really quickly to green. That's not what it is. I appreciate that people might think that just because everything else we tend to have that's color change kind of does that a little bit. It goes really quickly. These just don't. These really don't. There's something else. They're just made of something a little bit better. So I'll tip them again. There's not a really good way of doing it there, maybe. Is that a good place to hold it? So yeah, you should be able to see if I just sort of rotate myself in front of the camera like this, you should be able to see the journey that the leaves go through color wise. And it's really, really awesome to witness. I love these plants so much. Can I go a little bit closer? I just don't want it to focus on my face, you know, but that's him. So across this plant, there's loads of different colors and he's just beautiful. He's just beautiful. So although he is new, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that I've loved him for centuries because I don't think I even knew about them until... Well, actually, I knew about it in 2019 because there is a, might be 2018, but there is a, my first rare plant index for philodendron, believe it or not, it's in there. Can you believe? So I have known about it for a while, but it wasn't even on my wish list until I believe, I don't know, was it the start of 2020 or something? I'm not sure. It's taken like two years to get it. So I'm really, really happy with it. But yeah, honestly, guys, don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on them. Look at that. Oh, Yes. Hope that focuses because it really is that good. And if it looks a bit limey on camera, which it does, it's not really limey in real life. It's definitely more on a frosty mint sort of tone. But look at the colors in this plant. It's really, really gorgeous. Really, really nice, pinky, creamy, awesome looking plant. I've got literally plant crumbs all over me all over me. So yes, that was Philodendron Whippleway. It is newer, but honestly, I think I'm going to love this one for a long time because it just looks so good. And I might, even though it's on a pole, because it grows so compact, I appreciate you can't really see it. It's sort of there. I appreciate two seconds. Don't know if you can see it there, can you? A little bit. You, you don't get much, do you? But it's, it grows so compact. I might be able to get away with it on a pole. Similar way to getting away with a Monstera. Deliciosa on a pole because it would hide the pole a bit. So this one's not so bad. I think it's plants that are really, you know, one leaf, one leaf, one leaf, and it's a bit more sparse. So that concludes our video for this week. Let me know what you think about any of these. If there is plants on here that you expected me to show, such as, I don't know, I'm thinking off the top of my head, a lot of different types of Monstera, perhaps. The Philodendron Florida Ghost, absolutely. Uh, Philodendron El Choco Red as well. Anthurium Forgetii. I would put all of those into this video. I just haven't got them on me at the minute. <laughs> My forgetty eyes upstairs and it's very big and wobbly, so I didn't want to move him. Choco, mine is huge. It's literally floor height and I don't have anything to put it on to show you. What else? I've got a few things around here. I have Aglaonema Pictum Tricolor that I quite like. That is, to be fair, I probably could have grabbed that actually. That's over there. I've got a few things, but haven't been able to show you. Oh, the Splendid, Philodendron Splendid, love those. Most of them are Philodendron, but I just guess that's kind of my favorite genus of plants. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. Stay tuned on the channel because at some point, and if you haven't seen my latest repot with me, you won't know about it, but I've asked you guys in the video, hey, I'm thinking about doing some point of view sort of shop chores. And a lot of people have asked me for so many months, hey, can you do some chop chore videos? Cause it's really therapeutic and it's really nice. And I thought, hey, instead of me setting up frames and working within frames and worrying about focus and all of that, I can do more of a run and gun video. So I'm going to put a camera on my head and I'm going to go around the shop and I'm going to do some work. So at some point, I'm going to do a tester video for that. It's not going to be anything glamorous. It might be five minutes, literally just walking around the shop or inspecting something or chopping something or anything. It's basically just so that you can tell me if you like it and you like the style of it. Because if you do, then I will make some proper ones. So if you see that extra video and it's five minutes long and you're like, what on earth is this? It's basically a test run. So let me know what you think of that and keep an eye out for it. Thank you very much for watching this video. A special thank you to our sponsor for today, which is Squarespace. Links for that are in the description. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps me out. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you could subscribe and be part of the ever-growing family. That's it for this week's video, guys. And I will see you next week. Bye.